Okay, so when we last gathered, the party, after some examination of some new and old equipment that they received back from Zero, Henry and Yashua decided to go pay their good old favorite shopkeep Cuban a visit, since he had asked about them while they were off doing their own thing. And once they got there, they gave him a rundown, everything that happened. And when they mentioned Osiris and the fact that she was a phoenix, being a divine being that is his absolute favorite mystical creature of all time, his personality is flipped from a half stoic, half skeptical to an unyielding fanboy to where he almost disrespectfully uh, demanded that Cyrus was o Osiris was brought in front of him and after making a quick speed dial call to Francesca she and Osiris were there in a matter of 40 seconds and once Cuban had began going into question assault mode with Osiris who steadily grew more and more uncomfortable Francesca explained to our two out of three heroes that due to recent events they are being placed on trial in front of the board of directors of the city one of which is also on the continental board of directors and that they were advised to be very careful with what they say and how they present themselves because everyone with the exception of Francesca is either on the line of execution or being barred from the continent as a whole, not just the city. And that will be taking place four days from now in our story. Once that had all been explained and the direness of the situation had been set Henry and Yashua asked if there were any small jobs or petty crimes that need to be taken care of. And they were told that Francesca needs to look for something for them to do, but she might have something for them in a few hours. As they were wandering around the city trying to find something to do, their favorite chocobo Xander found them and explained to them that with the remaining members of the cult at still lived they managed to flee the city they also took with them the remaining ignis shards to a location eight hours away from the city and that he asked for their help in both retrieving it and acquiring dinner for the next few days and they gave no objections and he acted as a navigator and not too long after they left from the city, they found the giant Ignis crystal mass. They found the remaining members of a cult. And they found an elemental being that had been summoned forth thanks to the Ignis crystal mass. And as the party decided to engage them in combat, Xander played distraction just long enough to where he latched right on to the crystal mass and as our story continues he is consistently growing in size and the heat coming off of his body is getting to be a bit uncomfortable and with that our story will continue Birdie has quite the appetite, doesn't he? Yeah, he he sure does. He uh he hasn't stopped chomping on away at that thing yet. Also, is it just me, or is the heat getting to be a bit much? Java says that she fans herself to try to keep the the heat at bay 
Um, do chocobos grow that fast? Under most circumstances, no. At this rate, he'll be taller than you in your Eidolon form, and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, given how strong he let us know that he is. Yeah, he's a growing young bird. Uh, I'm honestly afraid that he might end up exploding or something. Well, hopefully he doesn't do that by the time he finishes his food. As for the rest of these bozos, we should probably get them out of the way first. Hmm. Originally, I was going to destroy all of them, but we have a trial in the next several days. Maybe we should turn one in. Or all of them. Well, I would agree. It's just that... How are we going to get them in the city? Because however they got out, I'm pretty sure they won't be able to get back in. Even if we take them with us as hostages. Because we already got in trouble once for using Henry's credentials to get inside. I don't know if we should really do that again with someone who didn't come with us from the beginning. Mm. I mean... Francesca is part of the board, isn't she? Can't she just give us permission to get in? With said prisoner? You do have a point. <sighs> well, I guess we can... Phone her when we get back, I guess. Alrighty then. Knuckles. Cracked. <laughs> Alright, uh... Same turn rotation as last session? Yeah. Alright. Zoom in a little bit. Camof... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to freeze him. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to freeze him. All right. I am going to freeze him. How do you roll a 1 and then a 20, right? Okay. Do not question me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're attacking the one... The one behind me. Okay. So I'm going to do... That's one ninety. So, how are you performing this new spell of yours? What are you doing action wise? Action wise, uh, have you seen Full Metal Alchemist how Roy Mustang just snaps his fingers? <laughs> of course, one of my favorites. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's just. All right. All right. You have dealt 1,337 damage. And because you rolled a 9 with the nat 1, but then you rolled a nat 20 right after that, the enemy is now suffering the cold status effect, meaning they are slower by <clears throat> excuse me. 
You know, slower by 50 points. And that was last for three turns until they are either hit by fire magic or the Essence spell is casted upon them. How much damage did it do to them? 13 what? 1337. 1337. Alright. That's. <laughs> Whoops. I have 200 points of, or 221 points of limit break energy. No, 222 limit break energy. Nothing. Alright, next up will be Dreva, and then she will be focusing her efforts upon the enemy to her left. And for her actions, she is going to cast Fira. Blazara, Eroga. She's going to use a turn to move next to the enemy and slice him right across the chest. Ah, uh, you casted Fura. Hold on. Learn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll put that in for you later. I'll make a note of that. <clears throat> Two, and then Two, six. She make things simpler for us. Uh, I'll learn the spells after combat. Okay, works for me. Dreva, with her attacking turn, has dealt a total of 1,469 points of damage. Nice. I also have to remember to subtract NP from her because she is still considered in flight mode. Okay, Henry, it is now your turn. Turn the TV back on. I'm I'm trying to figure out something right now. So I'm going I could use the Falcon armor, right? The flight. Mm-hmm. At level two. Yeah, if you want to. Okay. The air crash at level two. Oops. So I'm going to use anymore. that and slam into the big golem elemental. <laughs> okay. So... Wait, you're going to slam into that big mass of fire? Yeah. Fire doesn't hurt me, remember that. Yeah, with his new custom gear, he does have... He has, like, mid-tier fire resist, I'll say. Uh -huh. And life absorb from fire. Yeah, so if he takes fire damage, whatever he gets hit by, uh, he'll he will heal for fifty points of that damage. So if he got hit for three hundred fire damage, he take two fifty and then heal for fifty. Because I will crack open today's beverage for the session. Oh, he's going to be flying with the caliber. Oh, and slamming into him. Oh yeah, you do have that in the physical world. Forgot about that. <laughs> okay. So, 
Uh, where physically did you crash into him? Like his chest or something? Inside. His sides? Alright, I'll use that for the prone icon. Then I will add up damage for air crash and Kalibulg. Now I don't have to worry too much with my caliber. Because now I have the bubble, it's not going to hurt me as much. You got a point. You're right about that. Okay, so... Alright, uh... So I've got your damage rolled up right now. You <laughs> that was one, two... Two actions. <gasps> <clears throat> Hmm. He said he was weak to ice, right? It is weak to wind. To wind. Okay, this is perfect time. I cast my next three skills. Roga. Aurora. Uh. Oh, hey, look at that 20. Henry's just full on on him. Like, he doesn't want to waste no time. Alright. <laughs> you have dealt 2,742 damage. 2,000 what? 742. 274. And uh, when, the, when the Elemental's next turn com comes around... It's gonna have to spend that whole time getting up because you knocked it on its on its ass. As for the cultists, they are so let's say that the two on the sides of the crystal uh, they are going to focus their efforts towards getting Xander off of the crystal mass while the one that is both behind and are you a, a geographic are you above or below the enemy I mean oh, me? are yeah. no uh, Yasha are they are you above it and it's behind and below you or are you just like floating in front of it if your flight mode is still active Wait, who, me? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I disabled my flight mode. Okay. As soon so, as I started battle. So, it, so... Okay, so you're in front of it. Got it. Alright, so... The enemy is on the sides of the crystal. They're going to focus their efforts towards getting Xander off the crystal. While the one that Yashua is currently engaged with will keep its attention on him. And as per their efforts of trying to shoot Xander off of Crystal. They are going to cast Ruin again. But they are going to have to roll to try and hit him. That comes out too. Okay, I need to roll this. Mm. Okay. So, the collective ruin spells, they all fly towards Xander, and you see them make contact, but he does not physically react to them as he continues to crunch away at the crystal. And at this point, the heat coming from both him and and the crystal is growing to such an extreme standard that it is beginning to affect the battlefield as a whole. And as a result of this, for the next two combat cycles, everyone is going to suffer 
50 points of MP loss at the end of their turn. And to describe how large Xander has now become, he is almost as big as the crystal itself. How big is the crystal? It is f five feet taller than you in your Eidolon form. That's big. I have a question. Does bubble stack? So if I cast bubble multiple times, does it stack or is it just set? Nope, it is set. Okay. And you Can are you cannot there. reset the bubble ability until it breaks. Okay. So when you drop down to your a regular non-doubled HP, you can cast it again. This will also make you sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as per the enemy engaged in ya uh, with Yashua, uh, it is going to swing its decrepit-looking staff in your direction. Can I catch it? You can roll dexterity to catch the staff. Yeah. Okay. I roll my dice and see what I get. Oh, I found my d20, by the way. Oh, nice. Nice. Yep. It somehow made its way behind my laptop and I don't know how it got there. Maybe you were in autopilot when you were editing and got there. Probably, to be honest. Alright. Alright. Our rolls are exactly the same. So... Reroll? Yeah, reroll. Dare challenge me, Riku? Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, we're not even 30 minutes in. You've already rolled two nat 20s, bro. Holy. And one also. <laughs> right. And then, man. Alright, we know how today is going to go. Alright, so. Uh, the enemy swings their staff at you. You catch the staff. And you notice that their free hand has an ominous looking purple flame in it. What is it that you wish to do in this situation? Purple flame? Yep. I just. I was just gonna, you know, catch the staff and just swing it and break it on his head. Oh, I figured that's what you were going for, but uh, the other thing that was going on was my attempt to spice it up a bit. Mm, okay. In that case, I'm going to swing the staff at his hand where it has the purple flame. See what happens. I'm going to break his hand and the staff at the same time. Oh, okay. Like, no, bad. <laughs> Treat him like a child. All right. So, you... Swipe the staff out of his hands. You strike his glowing hand with the staff, simultaneously breaking both the staff and his hand. And when the flame makes contact with the staff, the spell that was going to be going to your direction more or less implodes in his hand and in conjunction with the enemy currently being on fire uh, they have been knocked five feet backwards towards the wall so I will give them this icon and I will move them they're frozen, Bounce. slowed, and on fire. <laughs> that guy is not having a good day. All right, I need to give that dude the slow icon. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. 
And as for the rest of them, they are still slinging their ruin spells to no avail. But, Drava feels a bit disrespected that they're just flat out ignoring her, especially the one standing right in front of her. And let's, <clears throat> let's just say that uh, you've never heard her swear this much before. Uh. <clears throat> As you can also very clear, clearly hear her shout at the top of her lungs, uh, the bigger threat is right in front of you. And then whatever heinous insults you can think, uh, you can fill in the blanks because that's what she's saying. <laughs> My, she's quite the prideful one, ain't, ain't she? As for the Ignis Elemental, with its turn now coming around, it's not going to attack because it has to spend the turn getting up. But now, it is Yashua's turn again. That is not what I meant to put on the Elemental guy. Does that look good? Yes. Oh, there's enough, something I wanted to ask. Since mm -hmm. we have a, the amulet, right? Do we do we get the 15 feet free or no? Uh, oh, you mean anklet? No, that does not give you free dash. Okay. One turn. So, Riku, for that skill, mm -hmm. is it the full turn or is it just one? Uh, it lasts until your next turn. Okay, so it's a full turn. Yep. However, uh, if you do that, you can't, uh, do anything else. So that's more like an end of turn kind of thing. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like putting a monster face down in defense position. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> it gives me more options now with that. Mm -hmm. I still need to figure out some way to have everything set as dual cast. Yeah, we, we both got to figure that one out. Okay. I materialize both my weapons or the armor shredder i don't know if it's a rifle or a revolver i don't know what it is uh i think i had it set as a rifle for you okay then i'm bring out the armor shredder one mean looking piece of uh equipment mm -hmm. Two, three, and and I'm just gonna bonk him in the head. Okay. I hope that doesn't you guys, count. you guys are all just like fighting the little minions while I'm holding off the the big element. <laughs> right. Well, you're equipped with fire resistance. I mean, if you really want it destroyed, you could just ask. I don't want him destroyed. I want him as a pet. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taming the beast over here while you guys are dealing with the <laughs> Okay, Yashua, this enemy is now dead, and you have oh. overkilled them by... 1,894 points. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Does you're, anyone uh, know CPR? I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> yeah, your your damage roll came out to 4,242. I, uh... Henry screams from where he's at. 
We need a hostage, not a bag of meat. <laughs> Yashua just kicks the corpse aside. <laughs> Fucking weakling. Uh, don't Useless. For, don't forget to subtract uh, 50 MP from your total. Is it everybody's turn that happens? Yes, at the end of your specific turn it happens. 50 MP? Yep. Copy. I'm at 1290. Okay. I did Gung Fu three times. Now I'm at 94 bullets. Uh, does this corpse have anything in it? Nope. Nothing that looks important anyway. Nah, I'm just gonna kick it again. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of shit. Alright, I end my turn. Alright. It is Dravis' turn yet again, and at this point, she is finished shouting at the enemy when she realized that, yeah, it's not really doing anything, as for whatever reason, they seem incredibly hyper-focused on getting Xander off of the crystal, and she... Decides to take it upon herself to attempt to forcefully get their attention. And let's just say that she positions her staff above her head, almost as if the bladed section of her staff above her head, almost as if she is going to cleave the guy down the middle but instead as she brings her staff down upon the enemy in front of her she's going to scream as loud as she possibly can um. <laughs> wait what are those rolls oh no <laughs> No! <laughs> okay, we have bubble on. Remember? It's sound. Okay, we're still good. We yeah, have you... extra health to spare. Yeah, you would be okay. Provided you Drayla after this pass the intelligence save. Oh, I gotta do intelligence save. Mm -hmm. You just gotta do it once though. Oh, I have to go to the save section. And I also need to subtract oh, God. one, two, three, four. I need to subtract five. I got a nat 20 again. Holy, you... I am so sorry for you. <laughs> okay, so we're starting Thank with God the one. Thank God I have the bubble. <laughs> right. Okay, so Yashua, you're good. Um, I'm just plugging my ears. Yeah, so you're taking you're taking half damage. Let me let me add all this up first. With a one point higher than me. <laughs> That's the funny part. Uh, yeah, you rolled a nat one. I rolled an 18, but you have so much more intelligence than me. That's that's the funnier part. It's just because I have a migraine. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the migraine's affecting your rolls. <laughs> I think you burnt all your luck on playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I think so. All living creatures within 40 feet. Let me get my measuring tool. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, everything here, uh, with the exception of. Wait, am I in the forty feet? Yep. Oh wow. <laughs> By five. So, everything here, 
with the exception of Yashua, definitely taking damage, is taking 3085 sound damage. Yashua, you are taking 1542. Hey, I'm definitely gonna like bonk her in the head after this. <laughs> But as a result of her shouting like God, that, why are they so loud? 3085. The enemy in front of her, uh, let's just say that his eardrums quite literally exploded because he's so close. Let me do. Did you lower your voice from recording? Nah, this dude is living on 16 HP. That's crazy. Uh, the one down here is living on 1,382. He's living on more HP than I am. Hey. Huh? Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, 1,000 damage I'm taking? How much? You're taking 1,542. Okay. Now this enemy down here is living on uh, 1485 HP left. And so is the one adjacent to that enemy. And Dreva will be losing 1050 MP because all that screaming she decided she wanted to do. Elemental? Take damage too. Yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna punch that in real quick. Uh, okay. Eight, twenty-one. Did Xander take that? <laughs> oh yeah, Xander took damage, but again, uh, you don't see any kind of physical reaction from him. Or Xander. Yeah, that 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 chocobo is having a real good time eating over there. Freaking five-star meal over there. For real. They definitely didn't forget the lamb sauce, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and once Drava finishes having her her shouting fit, she then uh, looks to you all and very sheepishly gives an apology. The extra eyes on Henry open up, and Henry's just looking at her, like, <laughs> really intensely pissed. Yashua, Yashua grabs his thumb and does like the little "you're dead" motion. <laughs> Diablo's just laughing on the inside. Yo, facts. Do you know when a character grabs their thumb and like slits their throat, mm -hmm. like a, as a threat? Mm-hmm. No. Take that as a no. No, no. I said, oh, my, my mic must not have uh, picked me up when I said, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, should I just signed that to her? Like, <laughs> you're gonna get it. Alrighty. So now it is Henry's turn. Okay, Henry casts Cure right off the bat. <laughs> Wait, that that busted your bubble? Yes, it took out the whole bubble and more. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> okay, I'm back to full HP. With your that. question: Did it take out my bubble? No, I didn't. <laughs> Have a little uh, bit of bubble left. Four, eight, four. So I'm back to full health. Henry just is sighing here. Bubble. <laughs> so I'll get my, my doubled health back. <laughs> now I have to remember what the total was. 4,000.
two. Okay, and we will cast Illusion, because I need to get this Illusion skill leveled up. Okay. And I'll imbue it with... Alright, I forgot to add my Limit Break energy when I did the... Gun Fu and the Bonk. What that... small creature are you conjuring? I'm going to conjure... Let's see, what, what animal should it be this time? Is there a crab? Uh, I think I have a crab in here somewhere. Let me see. Yes. The mightiest creature, a crab. <laughs> Skyrim's mud crab. Too close, just pinch his toes. <laughs> it's just a mud, just a crab with a kitchen knife. <laughs> Mess with the crab, or you get the stabbo. The crab being the fucking destroyer of worlds. <laughs> Frustration, <laughs> frustration. Frustration, frustration. That's the best. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where is it? Please tell me you have a crab image, Riku. I'm looking through the uh, the asset list that I have because I punched in crab in the um the search bar and the one that i saw that i wanted to use i have to pay for it oh uh, let's see what else could there be what other animals do you have uh i just found a list of some pretty mean looking frog people there's no rodents uh i think i got rodents in here i just <laughs> remember what which um, asset thingy it's under? Is it in this one? Wish nope. there was a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> I would literally just only summon hamsters at this point. You just have an army was... of hamsters ready to throw hands? <laughs> Basically, I would just toss hamsters at my enemies. <laughs> he summons the Hamtaro. Uh. Oh, I found a rat. And a, a rat? Serpent. Okay, good enough. Okay. <laughs> Let's I am the rat that... king. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is your favorite sidearm. Okay, you say you put uh, Aurora on it? Yep. The wind rat. <laughs> okay, we'll use this. That's going to be my new favorite summon. <laughs> okay. So it's, a, rat. so it's a wind rat? So, it's a wind rat. Uh, ah, so it's from New York. Damn. Okay, and then we're going to do this. Where is it again? We're not going to let him have any time to stay up. I'll crash into him again. Level two. Oh, okay. And one more skill. I need a mana charge. Uh, so we're gonna. Eighty-one percent. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> So Back gonna, to fall, baby. Gonna put the <laughs> oh, wait, mana charge is percentage? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yes, I sir. thought it was like 81 mana points. Oh, no. no. Percentage. Yeah, so he runs a <laughs> he, he runs a pretty sick, nasty, but also crazy, scary risk of either getting most of, if not all, his MP back. Or, or just, 2%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You nat, nat no, one on cool. that. What would happen if I nat one on it? Do I lose my all my math? No, you just get a, a literal one MP. Ah. Uh, I mean, if you want to lose all your MP, you can. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it would be funny if you added a penalty for getting all a nat one for mana. But then he would have to put a thing bonus for getting a hundred. Yeah. Just, just to uh, make it fair and balance it out and stuff. Yeah. Mana charge, get a nat twenty, gives you an extra turn for magic. Oh lord. That would be like a boosted mana charge, just not a normal mana charge. Yeah, that so would. You be, have that, those that boosted cracked. effects. Like you increase your mana by a hundred if you get a a hundred. Right. And then you lose all your mana at the time if you hit a one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, dude. Uh, before you continue with your attacking phase, 
I will let you know that in five more casts of your illusion spell, it will go from level zero to level one. Okay, time to stall this fight, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys summon some demi humans out of my fucking illusions. Yeah, you, you've used it like. <laughs> a I, I believe you used like 30 something times since you got it. Oh, yeah, I, every turn I use it once. <laughs> mm hmm. All right, so is the enemy's turn now? Nope, it's still Henry's turn. Uh, no, that's my fifth move. I counted six. Oh, right. Yeah, because I'm imbuing the illusion with one of them. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, so the... illusions don't count as a turn? No, if, if, he's, if he summons an illusion and adds an element to it, that's all just one action. Yeah. So there's that's five moves. Because I mm -hmm. air crashed the enemy too, and then I right. mana charged everything back. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, cool. <laughs> Is he prone again? Level yep. two? That's the reason I did the crash, then recharged all my <laughs> MP back. <laughs> then minus 50. So, at the end of the turn. Okay. So I lost 50 anyways, so. Not much you could do. So... With the enemies that still remain, uh, one of which has the ears bleeding. Uh, well, I need the damage from the big guy for the crash. Oh, it was there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so for enemies that still remain, the one with the bleeding ears just barely has the strength left to stand but it's going to it's going to take its staff it is going to plant a said staff on the ground and it is going to overload that staff with mana as a method to uh, blow themselves up and so I am going to <clears throat> roll my dice. This guy's gonna do that. Yeah, the one next to Draver. Yep. Oh dear. Oh. Well, I rolled a twenty for the enemy. Boom. <laughs> oh, he's gonna go off like a missile. All right. Yep. So he's just gonna go pop right like that, and due to not having ample time to react she is going to be knocked R four going to be knocked uh, 10 feet backwards that's not the feet right there so what she just slams against the crystal no but she's dangerously close to it This enemy is the dead. Let me put that away. And because of the closeness of the explosion, this enemy will collide with this wall right here. And the other two enemies on the opposing side of the crystal, they will... They will begin charging an orb of energy in front of them. And this orb will have tethers. <gasps> Excuse me. This orb will have tethers coming from the orb itself, re being redirected back into the their individual stave. So they are both channeling a spell together at the same time. And for image sake, I will use this icon. <clears throat> and I will take my, that's my, that's my drawing tool, tether one, and tether two. And yes, this, this attack is being aimed at Xander, the crystal, and now, Drava, because of how close she is. Hmm. And the fire elemental, once again, has to... Uh, take some time to get off the ground. 
Is it really fair that I could loop that? No, but there will be a penalty for it. As in, fuck around and find out if you do it three times in a row. Damn it. <laughs> Shatters his ribcage the third time. The third time is just full on mock whatever. <laughs> Dude, I dare you to do it three times. I think about it. <laughs> Alright, uh, my turn? Right? Yep. Yep. Alright. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable with Draylo being there, so let's just, you know, move here, get her out of the way, and drop her back here. Alright. Couldn't you just heal her? I don't and want her to be next to a uh, radioactive crystal. Double her. <laughs> I don't know how much damage that did to her, that self-destruction. Oh, it didn't do anything. It just knocked her back. Oh, uh, so she's still good health. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's she's still good health. I inspect her, and I'm like, okay, you're good. Thank God. I just focus my attention on these two. Okay. That looked like it hurt. No, it just uh, caught me off guard. Yeah, uh, an impact like that will kill anyone where I'm from. Good to... Wait. So, does that mean, and she and she has like, like the shit-eating grin on her face? Does that mean physically I'm stronger than most people where you come from? Screams, no. <laughs> Most civilians, I would say, yeah. Anyone that has military training, Yashua looks at her and, yeah, not so much. Henry looks at Yashua and just grins with him. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you're definitely above average when it comes to civilian personnel, but anyone with military training is, ah, that's another story. Well, it was worth asking. Oh no, granted, you'll eventually be more powerful than I could even imagine. I could tell you have potential for it. Alright, I did two actions. Moved, grabbed her, moved back. Three actions left. What should I do with them? Grapple one of them so they explode that spell on themselves. Hmm. <laughs> Give me an idea. I'm going to fly over here between them. I want to grab both of them and just slam their faces into the dirt. So, like, they stop moving or doing whatever the hell they're doing. Okay. If you really want to go through with that, that's going to be the rest of your turn. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I need you to roll strength. One for each person? Yep. Well, one guy definitely is not moving. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, so... <clears throat> you... Wait, he rolled it? <laughs> yeah. So let's say that... Guy A is just... A down for the count because of how hard you hit his head on the other one's head. Oh wait, no. Do you say you were face planting them? Face planting them. Face one guy's head is both of them in, I'm face planting both of them into the ground so they stop doing their tethering nonsense. Okay, so let's say that guy A, you face planted him so hard that uh, he's bleeding pretty bad, and guy B is just unconscious we have and, our hostage <laughs> and the orb that was being tethered to uh, dissipates right in front of you I have to stop with these 20s man <laughs> <laughs> so they're both incapacitated except one is bleeding to death and one's KO'd 
I won't say bleeding to death yet. Yet. All right. Okay. I look up to Dravo and tell her that I will secure these two. You get the last guy. He's KO'd in a wall, isn't he? No, he's I not want... KO'd, but he just uh, he hit the wall. Still alive, though. Bag him, bag him, or destroy him. Trace is yours. Right, Henry. So basically, I could stall for two turns at most. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to. Uh, for Draver's turn, though, she is going to. Did I put that in for? I didn't uh, input air crash for her. So instead going to have her start slinging out wind spells again oh no oh that sucks all of these are being aimed towards uh the elemental oh just let me Add all that up. Alright, now I gotta do this half damage in that one, which is incredibly unfortunate. And let's say that because of that nat one, one of the <clears throat> one of the Aroga spells veered off course just a bit as another pulsation of fire came out from Xander and that wave it's making its way towards Henry, the elemental. Oh, no. The cultist and the well, the illusion to take them, so disregard that last part. But because it is fire coming Henry's way, uh, instead of him taking damage, he's gonna heal, even though he's already at full oh. health. <laughs> it just hits me like a warm wave, like ah. <laughs> ah, yes, the flame. Refreshing. Just <laughs> uh, me and the elemental are vibing here with the flames hitting us. Right. It's like a warm breeze hitting your hair. Okay, and it's now Henry's turn. Well, I need to put an air crash for Drava, because I swear I thought I did that already. Is there any way I could tame the elemental <laughs> with this interaction? Hmm. <laughs> Even if he's not that big, I just want a little fire imp. Would be awesome. Hmm. <clears throat> There is. I'll, I'll I'll give you, I'll give you an inch, to try <laughs> and. Uh, get the elemental. But okay. then I then I could give up on my little desire for <laughs> the fairy. <laughs> I can have a little fire, <laughs> <laughs> a little fire sprite. <laughs> so. This makes me more demonic at this point. Let's say that... You're gonna have to ask Diablos for help with this one. 
Okay, Henry pulls out the book. Diablo, let's do this. <laughs> Alright, give me just a second. <laughs> Joshua is looking over there in that direction like, the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Henry with the giant smirk on his face, like, let's do this. <laughs> Alright. It's okay, if I tame this, I just want it to be a little fire mouse <laughs> like this. <laughs> me. Can I have like one elemental, one of each element? Oh my god, that would be a perfect idea! <laughs> Collect the elemental pet. <laughs> Alright. It's like Harvest Moon, I have one of the dingies of each. <laughs> That's gonna be your side mission from now on. You have to collect one elemental. If one of each okay element. okay with that. Having small little dingies of each elemental. Alright, alright. Uh, what do you want? Why are you bothering me? I'm supposed to be sleeping. Uh. I got a really fun idea. <laughs> I'm listening. You see this giant elemental? Yeah, right. right. I want to tame it. Henry's just smirking the biggest smirk in his life. <sighs> we need more minions. <laughs> Why, you just want to tame everything, don't you? Hey, I tamed my best friend, didn't I? That's not necessarily taming, you dick. You got the point. We gotta yeah. cause some more fun, don't we? <sighs> anyway... <laughs> so, uh... We can we go about this one of two ways. We can either go the bully method and beat it to an inch of its life. Or... We can scare the piss out of it. I like the scaring the piss out of it. <laughs> I know you do too. Okay. Yashua is observing from where he is what you're doing, and he's just loading his armor shredder with ice rounds with malicious intent. So, let's say that, uh. Actually, why don't you, uh. Let me take over for a bit. Just long enough to... Have a... Little chat. If you will. Harry gives full possession. To Diablo. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ugly? How's it going? Actually, you're not, uh... Wow, the... You know, I'm actually kind of... Kind of disappointed, really, because the elementals are... Here, they are, like, little piss babies compared to where I come from. Anyway... So... Little Mr. Baby Ignis Elemental... Are you going to baby talk it? Let's say that, in exchange for you pathetically staying alive, if I were to uh, summon your worst nightmares in front of you, you can either die, fight like a coward, or come with me. The choice is yours, and yours alone. Since, uh, since my host here is now impressively resistant to fire and the likes, I can just grab you by the throat. And don't you get a taste of some real fire? And as this is taking place, Neon Blows 
had Henry float in the air. He engaged the flight gear. And Henry's body, through Diablo's taking control, is quite literally choking the fire out of the fire elemental. And Henry, please roll persuasion. No, 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 uh, no, 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 not persuasion, intimidation. Intimidation. Oh. Wow, that's pretty high for me. <laughs> right. Oh my god, you have a, a normal one. one? Jesus. Yeah, I have no charisma. Okay. I'm the class clown. Do you really think I have the intimidation? <laughs> that's why I have Diablos for. <laughs> <laughs> so, I rolled my dice. You beat me by four. Oh. So... We're going to say that due to Diablos' <laughs> efforts of initially shit-talking it to its face, to then insulting its very existence, to then choking it, let's say that it immediately folded because it's also very close to being dead. It immediately folded and it is now kneeling before you. And Diablos is going to loosen his grip just a bit. And before he hands control back to you, he is going to say, Ah, well, and we should realize where you belong in this world. Down. On the ground, on the trash that you are. All right, Henry, I'm done. I'm going back to sleep. Leave me the fuck alone for the next few hours. Henry's just like, thank you. <laughs> okay. Henry just looks at the elemental. So, are you going to be my friend or not, or do I have to bring him back out? <laughs> it responds by. Writing on the ground, uh, <clears throat> please don't do that again. As I will now make a note of this. Can I take, uh, send you a picture of like the form that if it could take that form? Uh, yeah, Here, send it right now. You already know what this one is, Rick. It's from Repels. Nah, I know. We'll do this, move it up here, shrink it down a bit. Alright, well, there is just one enemy left. Ah, excuse me. So this fire imp has three stages that it goes through. So that's how it looks at stage one. But they have full rendered pictures of it too. Alright. So that's how it looks when it says stage one. <laughs> The fire elementals from Repels, yeah. They look like that. I forgot about that. The little fairies. <laughs> you remember how they grow up? Yeah, I remember. They turn into monstrosities. Oh yeah, and they're all pure fire. Doing the level 3. So they just grow with strength. But they have the same attitude. <laughs> All right. I now have air crash in for Drava. 
Air crash. That's something I haven't added yet. You didn't add it either? No, I forgot. I'm the only one who put the input in. <laughs> oh, no. Never mind. I have it. Never mind. Okay. Alright. Uh... There's one guy left. Right. One dude left. Back is to the wall. <laughs> Let's say that the last enemy remaining is just uh, observing his surroundings. If he does and move a muscle, I'm going to air crash him at max level. Okay. Let's go with that. And let's say that... <clears throat> let's say that as he looks around the area, you can piece together that he's trying to figure out how to get out of here. Right, move an inch. I dare you. Take a single step. <laughs> Do it, pussy. You won't. Wait, is he saying that to me? No, that's what I was interpreting your character saying in my head, but... Oh, I was about to, to say, bro, you're a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to capture you, but if he says that, nah, I'm turning him to red paste. Into Heinz tomato ketchup. Oh, Lord. Alright, well, with that in mind, it is now your turn. However, before you take any attacking actions, uh, you now notice that the crystal is pretty much gone at this point. And there stands Xander, head held towards the sky, and he has a very, very pleased smile on his face. Henry's also smiling with a very pleased face. <laughs> <laughs> I look up at Xander and I ask him, I, I, I assume you have no room for for dessert. And in response to that, he is going to... Uh, he's going to wave his, his left wing as a manner of saying, hold on a moment. As he simply burps. But this simple burp might as well be him spawning a flamethrower in his throat. As you just see like beams of flame just come out all all in the sky. None of them like are hitting I, you, but they're just I like how up one, the air. one actually hit my character image. It's like <laughs> ah <laughs> <laughs> Up and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely not gonna make anyone panic in the city. Doesn't make me panic. <laughs> and with his burping having finished, he is going to say, "Ah, oh, no, nah, if uh, Whew, wow, if I decide to take on any dessert, I might put on some unnecessary weight." Right. Now then. For our final guest. I whistle at him. You wanna surrender or do you wanna end up like your other friends? In response, he's not gonna verbally say anything, but he is going to shove his free hand in his pocket, throw two items at you. I'm just gonna air crash him. Okay. I told him if I I I said if he does anything, I'm gonna air crash him. You did say that. Yep. Okay, so I wanna I wanna air crash at like, how do you 
intensify it like level one level two level three like you just have to say you which level you're using so what's the what's the max level level three yep all right level three air crash oh, that's mm. gonna hurt you too yep oh i don't care i could take it okay he can't i'm built different <laughs> Uh, you crash and do so hard that we're busting through the fucking wall. Yeah, you, with him. You send him through the wall, and as you do so, there's a very large trail of uh, red from the wall to where you are now, and when you like, like physically, when you like just. Like, dive bombing him? Were you shoulder checking him? Uh, Were you like shoulder elbow first? charging? Shoulder charging? But like, I'm doing like a swiping motion with my arm after doing impact. So like, it's like kind of slashing his torso. Okay. All right. Well, regardless, guy's fucking dead. So, with all the enemies subdued and or defeated in whatever capacity, that is another battle complete. Uh, I need to know the recoil I've taken and the damage I've done. <laughs> right. Let me... Level 3 costs 300 MP, will knock the enemy prone, and lower your their defense by 10 you will take 20 percent damage dealt to the enemy right, so i'm gonna play this first all right so if we're using level three air crash you took Okay. You took 126 points of damage for that. And wow, you... I was kind of expecting to lose 1k or something. Oh no. And you dealt 632. As for rewards... You have gained uh, 1,000 EXP. I'll write it down to just, just keep track of everything. 1,000 EXP, 2,000 gil, 1. And because you have hostages with you, there you go. Prisoners of war. Two hostages. And our subclass gets half the experience, right? Mm hmm. Technically, I took no damage from this fight. My bubble is on its like last legs. <laughs> Very true. How much was it for a level for experience? 5,000. I sent Riku. you the pictures, Riku. I saw them. Riku will tell you when we all level up, since we all level up together. Mm -hmm. So, the elemental is the little Sundere unhappy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> First stage. <laughs> Just a little pissed off pixie. <laughs> Take it from her home. <laughs> Use for war. <laughs> Put through hell. Of Diablo. <laughs> That's a note for me, for Henry, and... Yashua, you need to put in a uh, proto materia. Uh, proto fira. Wow. Uh, 
Are we going to name the pixie? Or can I come up with a name for it? Or do you want to, Riku? Uh, well, well I mean, you tamed it. Yeah, it it's your uh your claim, so you can name whatever the fuck you want. I just don't want to overlap with any of your other character names. Uh, I mean, I won't be able to tell you if you have until you give me something. Let's see. I need something very cindery name. Oh, just call her Igni. <laughs> Igni? Yeah. yeah Igni's fine. She's a fire pixie. Igni. Igni, yeah. perfect. There. Okay. And it's very cindery sounding. Okay. <laughs> Yashua, this is for you. Let's... Wait, half of your attack is 267, right? Yes. Alright. There you go. What is that? Oh! Yeah, that's for Hold you. On. I will make a attack token and... of the pixie um, in a bit. Take your time. No rush. Yep. 10. It's uh, 1D. Oh, 2D8. Okay. I'm gonna be killed by illusion. I was gonna ask what happened to him. Oh, I mean, battle's over. Unless you uh, wanted to keep it out for whatever reason. He just sacrificed his life. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even experience the world. <laughs> it's just cut down. Okay, level zero illusions just get cut down like nothing anyway, so it's all good. Alright. <laughs> when they're a little bit more sentient, then, <laughs> then I think they should stay out. <laughs> uh, is it 1d10 for burning? Or... Yep. So you put that in damage too? Yep. D10 for... Nada, nada. Burning. <sighs> Let's see if I got this already. He's just sitting there like, I could have tamed a shadow beast. I could have done this. all these things <laughs> if I only had the apple. Like this. Oh, my God. I just wasted a nat 20. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so, like this, right? Yep. There's no burn chance on that, is there? Ah. Uh, right. He forgot to... But the so second slot... Yeah, so what you see damage too, you have to hit the little checkbox by it. As I accidentally gave you a new attack, uh, I'm just gonna... Yeah, damage yep. too, so it pops up one or two, right? Yep. You have to roll one D2. Okay, so let's try that again. There we go. Oh. Isn't it supposed... It's 1d10 for him? Or is burning? Oh, wait. No, 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 no. It's not. Because... 1d2, right? 1 or 2. No, uh, regular Fira does not have a burn chance. So uh, we're on the right track, but it doesn't apply to this one, though. Okay. Hey, is it, okay, is, I'll remove the check then. Yeah, because regular fire and fear and all that stuff is different than the class specific one. So it's like this then? Yeah. yeah. So you don't get burning. No, exactly. not, not until he gets Firaga. Or proto Firaga, anyway. Am 
My arsenal gets bigger. Okay. Alright, so. <clears throat> getting back on track. Now that this battle has concluded. And this small scale side quest has now ended. Perfect side quest. Uh, you have gotten rid of all of the Ignis shards that Xander has told you about, which, by completing this, you've also completed a quest that you've had for quite a while. And I will give you those rewards at the end of session. Uh, so now we will continue on with our scenario. <clears throat> Lemon break energy is almost charged. It's a thousand, right? Mine is like halfway. Yep. Mine's at 732. So, Sander is going to speak up. He's going to say, ah, yes. Thank you, friends, for assisting me in not only getting rid of all these crystals, but also helping me have a very, very nice meal. And so now, we will make our way back to the city after I reduce how large I am, because you all have become very small to me. Henry's just Wait. holding the, the fire amp, like, yeah, <laughs> Not even <laughs> listening to Xander. <laughs> I'm just looking up at Xander and I'm like, wow. Do you grow more than this? My... True height... Is um um well as I am now I'm slightly taller than a small house. Or uh, hmm, I wouldn't be surprised if you grow bigger than a skyscraper. Oh no 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 no! My mother is that tall. I am not. Uh, and you just right around like what the fuck. Oh, come on, Henry. That, um... Henry's just like... <laughs> Henry's getting ideas in his brain. <laughs> come on, Henry. We've seen bigger creatures before. Don't be so surprised. We have plan. <laughs> okay. You know this mountain that we are currently standing upon? Yeah. With how old I am now, if I were to ingest that much fire... Around seven ish more times, I would be as tall as this mountain. That is my actual genuine height. Ah, impressive. Yes. You're almost as big as a celestial life form. Interesting. Henry coughs. <clears throat> He's not supposed to know. Ah. Uh... It's public information. <laughs> the pixie's just in one of Henry's hands, like being waved around. You're like poking the pixie's cheek, or head in her case. Henry's showing Yasha, like, look how cute she is poking her face. That... where did you... Ah, uh, Henry's just like, ah... Uh, elemental. That's the it elemental? Poking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> ah, I hope he's not planning to open a zoo. So. It is, um, getting to be a bit late in the day. As, oh wow, the sun is beginning to set. Let's say that we all make our way back to the city. Um, uh, yeah. Just one thing about the hostages. Before that, let me strip them of their weapons. I don't need them turning their staffs and self-destructing again. Alright. You should probably also empty their pockets. Henry because... gets this hostage and starts emptying his pockets. I'm gonna snap both of their staffs so they can't use them. 
All right. Do I need an investigation to check what's in their contents? Mm, yeah, sure. Okay, you search this one. Drava will search this one, and I would just break their yeah. stats. I don't have to do a strength roll, do I? I think I'm strong enough to break twigs. I yeah, was too you, off. You don't have to roll for it. Investigation. Right. So, Henry, you find an additional five hundred gil. Nice. And you also Funny. find another medallion. Nice. A Drava, she finds three hundred gil. And a fragment of a rune. And she's going to say, this looks different from the other runes that I've seen before, but I don't feel anything of dangerous intent coming off of it. So I think it's safe to say that it's probably powerless. Oh, well. You should uh show that to Frankie and the others to see. Yeah, that's that's what it actually probably is. Probably a good idea. So, Zand is going to speak up. So now that their contents have been emptied, I may or may not have overheard your conversation with Francesca about your pending trial that you shouldn't be serving so how are we going to go about getting them inside the city well i'm gonna have to make a call first i pull out a tombstone i i glare at it for a second i'm like i uh how do you use this again henry just calls out diablo <laughs> <clears throat> no, don't get Diablo in this. No, I'm pretty sure Diablo wants to go back and talk with Garland a little bit more. What I think we should do it the fast way. What do you want? Now. We need to get back into the city to the cafe. <laughs> don't kill me. Why are you asking us if we can fly? We can fly, but we have to get the the hostages in quickly and without being seen. Can you just warp us there? I mean, we can, but that doesn't necessarily mean that will. Unless you got to something for me. Henry hands him a bottle of rum. I don't want that <laughs> shit. That human alcohol is disgusting to me. I walk up to... Uh, Henry, and then I show my inventory of different kinds of drinks. Because remember, I bought the entire cellar. Pick Henry your looks, poison. Henry looks at all of them like, Diablo, which one do you want? You guys can have a good time, you and Garland. Pick them. Okay, so I need you to remember that. Even though you, and my process myself, can provide me with a physical form to take, you need to remember that Garland is a spirit, so that's not going to do anything for him. Additionally, why are you trying to turn into an alcoholic? Because it's more fun that way. <laughs> Dangerous. Just the proper word. It's not dangerous. He's allowed to have a life outside of my body. Additionally, part two. Demonic alcohol and human alcohol are two completely different creatures. Human alcohol might as well be water to me. Or, I suppose, uh, juice. Fruit juice, specifically. 
yes, we, we have, have fruit juice where I come from. from. I'm interested how demonic alcohol tastes like because none of this stuff gives me a buzz. Um, if you really want to take that risk, I will tell you now there is a one in four chance that you will either catch fire, be intoxicated for a little much straight, completely forget who you are, or, or, um, what's, what's the, the worst, worst sickness, sickness you've ever had to deal with? We don't get sick where I'm from. <laughs> There's no such thing as illnesses where I'm from. <laughs> okay. If, if you, you had to think, think of an illness, illness, what would it be? I th uh, mm. I remember hearing something. It's ancient history. Something about cancer. Oh, right. So it would be that multiplied fiftyfold. You would uh, probably die after a single sip. Ah, uh, fun. That's still not going to stop me though. So where do we wire this demon alcohol? Why the fuck would I tell you? You got demon oh, friends you can ask. Okay, t take us back and I can ask them to give us some for you. Francesca got some really deep connections. I'm sure she'll be able to find us a barrel or two. I'm sure Raphael and them are back there drinking. <laughs> it's not even been a month. And I'm already regretting this host decision. Whatever. All of you stand close, I guess. Hold on, let me just pick, drag these bodies. I'm just grabbing their, you know, I'm just grabbing them by the neck. Just dragging them over here. Henry, close to holds, Henry. Henry holds a little fire pixie close and tight. <laughs> and she's fighting it at all costs. <laughs> Where is that teleportations page? Not there, not there. Ooh, forgot I wrote that one. Oh, I'm gonna read that later. Um, there it is. Alright. No I move, stand close, and hold your breath. Hold my breath? Why? Just do it. <laughs> After saying that, uh, small Diablos rips a page out of that book of his, and before long, a black and purple portal appears under everyone's feet, and when the portal moves from the bottom of their feet to covering their entire body, Everyone now finds themselves back at Francesca's club in the office space. And as for the first thing you hear, because uh, normal club operations have more or less resumed, uh, it looks the same way as it did when you first got here. There's people partying, dancing, having a good time. Though, uh, because Diablos is still here with Garland. Diablos is making himself invisible to everyone that is irrelevant, according to him. And Garland is just avoiding people at all costs. <laughs> and I will play this. So we got warped into the office space. Uh huh. Wait, wait. The office space is right here or right here? Uh, it's it's both this room and this room. That's more Frenchie's office, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're here in the office space, right? We get warped. Do we have to roll to stick the landing? Uh, no. It's not that type. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like a it's like a stationary teleporter. All right. And before. Diablos goes back to having this conversation. <clears throat> he says, oh, 
Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason I told you I don't hold your breath is because you all haven't been exposed to enough demonic energy and myself. So if you were to inhale and plant, let's just say that it would have felt like you were swallowing thorns. Ah, oh, fun. Fun. Right. Now, now you guys. <laughs> you. Vessel. <laughs> Uh, for the rest of the night. night. Fuck off. <laughs> Henry runs out to Raphael and explains the situation <laughs> about I'm eating go, demonic uh, alcohol. I'm gonna go uh, walk up to Zero and tell him about the two prisoners we brought. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do the Raphael interaction first. I think I'm to say. Uh, why do you want to drink our alcohol? I don't think that'd be very good for you. No, I owe Diablos a couple of bottles. If you could give me even a how to create it recipe. Um, well, as you know, I'm not very smart, but... If I remember anything, I can let you know. If that'll help you out in any way. That'd be great. Okay. Great having you around. And then Henry shows him my little fire pixie. Oh, hey. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? He's my new friend. And Henry has those glowing eyes like <laughs> whenever he possesses a new <laughs> friend. <laughs> a new toy. Raphael knows exactly what's going on. She doesn't really look like she wants to be friendly, but she if has. you say so. Henry says she has no choice. <laughs> Oh. Well, sometimes life doesn't really give you choices. And as a response to that, uh, your elemental friend just has like an extreme scowl on her face. Are you puffing? <laughs> You're just pouting. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. So now. I'm gonna swap on over to Zero and Cynthia. What did you say you were showing them? Or telling them? Um, Alright, I was gonna tell them that we have returned from a little uh, off the records operation. Henry buzzes in and just let, tells Yashko to let them know the pixie is not going to harm anybody and not to hurt it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, like, wave off his comment. Like, it's not important. Okay. <clears throat> you, uh, what kind of off-site, small-scale things you do? Okay. Xander. Yeah? Lovely little chocobo. Uh, <laughs> not so tiny anymore, but, uh... He told us about the remaining Ignis shards gathering in the outskirts of the city. And we went to go deal with that problem. We eliminated a few of the remaining cultists and brought two prisoners. Oh. Hopefully they were able to answer some of our questions and... I don't know, could be used as a... Uh, some leverage against our case later on. Right. It's it's still bullshit how you guys have to go on trial for fucking saving the place, but Well, hey, I can't necessarily blame them for being afraid of the unknown. <sighs> Look, yeah, like on one hand I agree with you, right? But on the other hand, right? We've had so much unknown stuff happen here that they should be used to it at this point though 
to be fair, right? We've never had to borderline go into war the way we just did. So, <sighs> fucking politicians, am I right? Yeah, except I feel like these politicians may be playing a little game of their own. I suspect that these, uh, what were they called? Directors? Yeah, the board of directors for the city. I feel, right like, I feel like one of them may be connected to the cult. Oh, so you share my theory. And Cynthia goes, oh, fuck, here we go again. No, hear me out. There is, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to look very hard to actually put the pieces together. Look how organized they were. Look how resourceful they were. Look, look how much leeway they had. And look the amount of control they had over the populace. No normal occult could pull such a task. Right, right. I, I fully agree with you you bring up a damn excuse me you bring up a damn good point and i'm glad i finally have my opinion shared because this is this is all mighty mighty convenient how they just you know have all this shit and we're able to accomplish so much with how, well, before we reduced them to nothing, how few of them there were. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know what game they're playing, but I could tell you, just because of their tr just because of this trial is evidence enough that they're not very happy with us. Most likely, they're gonna try to remove us from the equation, or at least attempt. Yep. Right. Damn good point. Another thing, Cynthia. Yeah, what's up? Drava found a mm, a ruin of sorts. We don't know what it's for. We don't know what it does. Hopefully, you could take a good look at it and see if it's anything dangerous or part of something that's dangerous. Uh, yeah. When. When the club closes down for the night slash morning, uh, send her my way. I'll take a look at it. Of course. I just nod at her. And I want you to do that. Osiris suddenly appears behind you. And she says to you, You neglect to remember that the cult was formed long before they ever made it to this city so whatever resources that they might have had you don't know if they had them prior to or if they received the seemingly surplus that they had while they were in operation here It's still, you may have a point there, yeah, but there's also the stolen technology. What stolen technology is this that you speak of? Ah, uh, I just shrugged. I don't know what kind of technology is stolen. Right before, right before we got into the city, we were just informed that we were, we were supposed to investigate the cult, take them out of commission, and see if we could re return said stolen technology. As far as I'm concerned, I haven't even seen the stolen technology yet. Have you, Zero? Aside from one of my surveillance drones being recovered no and whoever had my drone wiped all of the data off of it and i've been trying to locate a recovery for it but whoever had my shit made 
unnecessarily sure to cover the tracks. Hmm. I'd even say that it was excessive with how much they did, just to make sure they weren't found. Or they're just really good at what they're doing. Whatever. A third party, perhaps? And Cynthia, she's going to speak up, and she's going to say, I can't believe I'm playing into this goddamn conspiracy theory, but if there were a third party, who could they have possibly been? What could their motives have been? Why did they decide to do what they do? Or do what they did? And how did they manage to slip all this into the city? Because Henry. Guess, the other thing that you have to keep in mind of is that the other districts didn't have as many problems as we did. Compared to what we had to deal with here, the other districts might as well just had a bad rainstorm. Henry and comes in. The conversation with like a serious look on his face. I have an idea. Why would the board of directors, instead of praising us, put us down? I think they have something to do with this. Yeah, I've already gone over that. The... Uh, this, is, this is Osiris talking. The... Half-demonic one... Raises... A good point that, as the blonde one stated... Was already established, though... It also... Stands to reason... That... If a band of travelers, and she kind of, kind of hesitates, saying travelers, as she appears to be uncomfortable saying that, were to enter their city, district, whatever you humans call them, and then within... I don't know how many days time as my memories of Rosalia are quickly becoming muddled and faint. Within a few days time, not only managed to uncover the mass cult, essentially start a war, or borderline war, since that's what you want to call it. On, all on their own, and then essentially single handedly stop this cult. Wouldn't you raise a suspicious eye as well? Yashro folds his arms, shuts his eyes, and thinks. It makes sense, but it's too inconvenient. This occult problem, a group of uh, unknown travelers solving the problem, convenient, yeah. They they need an escape goat. Guess where the goats? <laughs> it's better us than Osiris, though. As Henry looks at Osiris. She side eyes you. Not looking. Not physically turning to look at you. Says what prompts you to say that nonsense again. Well. It was. Your fiery explosions. <laughs> no. Not that part you moron. The bit where you mentioned, it's better us than Osiris. Well, we don't want our friends to get the blame. And Henry just smiles at her. 
you still Besides. refuse to let go of calling me your friend when we are not that. Henry shows her the pixie. Well, she's my friend. Anyways. It would make things easier for us to take the blame since they'll be... All of their attention will be on us. Now we have to think of a countermeasure. What do you mean? I don't mind being labeled as a criminal since it's, it's not the first time this happened. Explain to me what you mean by countermeasure. Well, a way to turn the trial against the board of directors. Granted, one of them is trying to destroy us. I see. Do you understand which of these directors is trying to, quote, destroy you? Not yet. Well, there's only one way to find out. I have one idea. Do you have conscious thought in that scatterbrained head of yours? Ah, uh, hey, uh, he may be an idiot, but he's not stupid. Henry Smirk. <laughs> Speak. Maybe it has something to do with Frenchie's mother. That lady always wants something. Yeah, but I don't to be although what was her name? Jin? Yep. Was it? No, like I say this in character to Zero. Yep. That's that old bag's name. I still haven't figured out how she ties into all this, although she is a suspicious character. You did mention that she wanted to take over the district and was a political rival, correct? Correct. But is she also part of the board or no? Yeah, she is on the board of directors. Henry smirks like, was it that difficult to think? <laughs> No, however, the other issue at hand is that not only has she been trying to take the entertainment district for herself, she was also the one that gave Chief the okay to mobilize her task force. But now, she has full authority to have scapegoats. Well... Based off our conversation, yes. However, there was something I want to talk to Chief about before our operation started. And normally, Chief and her mom don't get along. But with how things were developing, for the first time in the last few years that I've been here, I heard genuine worry in her mom's voice. And because they both made the task force together and they essentially share it, she was, I'd say, damn near pleading for the operation to go well. So, while she and Zero looks around to make sure uh, Francesca can't hear him. While well, she might be a bitch, she at the very least gives a shred of a damn about Chief. Henry's just holding the communicator on for Frenchie. <laughs> My God. 
Me just hearing Diablo's giggles. <laughs> Alright, so we have two board of directors backing us up, one being uh, Francesca and uh, Angela, correct? Yep. However... These board of directors, these politicians, do they work for the people or the people work for them? Tell me how that goes. Cynthia chimes in. Well, that it it's more more so reliant on which district you're talking about, because chief, as you know oversees the entertainment district and as you also know she breaks her ass in seven different ways just to make sure that the people are okay uh angie is also a part of the entertainment district but as i'm sure you know she handles all of the Let's just say violent operations, the security force, all that mumbo jumbo. That's what, okay, she's military. That's what she handles. But, as you also know, for the last time I have to say that, uh, she doesn't stay here. You know, she's back at Solace with her husband and everyone else there. The other two districts, being the Kingdom Cultural District and the Cybernetic Architectural District, those two are the people work for them, not the other way around. Ah, uh, so they roll with the Iron Fist. Yeah, and it's it's pretty bad. That's why so many people want to move here. But we've unfortunately had to turn down applications and move move notices because we're at capacity. We quite literally can't take any more people right now. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And there's also in between all of the districts. And as she says this, she pulls up the city map again. Put this right here. In the heart of everything, where I'm going to my hand here right here there's the the quote unquote center of the city as a whole that is unclaimed and unmarked territory and because there's no director or district that has authority over it whatever happens there Whatever it may be, no one can do anything about. And I see. everyone has been fighting over it for the last uh, fucking six years now. Wait, wait, which one? The lake? Oh, the, the center one. Yep. So, on this map, where exactly are we? Okay, so let me grab my my ruler. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw a line, and we're gonna. This line will be what what the entertainment district has, what we have control over. So it's. Oops, that's one thing. There we go. So we have control over this space. 
all the way to the entrance of old downtown. And everything southward. This have. space up here. So the here, medical center and all that. Okay. Yep. So here, this is all of the area that the entertainment district has. The cybernetic architecture district. They have all of this down here toward the east. And they have all of old downtown. As for everything else, the Kingdom Cultural District has from the end of the city center through all the way through to the New Harbor area. The bank block is common ground area, so while no one has direct control over that, it's more of like a general rules kind of area. So the corporate center everybody's fighting for. Yes. <clears throat> this space here is what everybody is fighting to get. Hmm. Even though we should have possession of it. Yes, by all accounts, we, here at the Entertainment District, should have that land. But, because the other two districts and the rest of the goddamn directors want to control everything, they keep getting in the way of that. Oh. Now that is interesting. Yasha just had an epiphany. Henry has an idea that shouldn't be said out loud. <laughs> no, sorry. I meant to say Yasha got an epiphany. Henry's world conquest ideas are popping in his head. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that and, and central... Yeah, him. Hmm. That central area. That could be the perfect place to hide some interesting developments. Osiris says, continue that line of thought. Everyone is fighting for that piece of domain correct correct whatever the directors are planning or whichever the one is whichever director is trying to eliminate us whatever they're planning it, it's most definitely got to do with the center area there and i feel like we're gonna find something really important there too since it's the since since if you're running an operation and you want to dominate something, it's a lot that. better to hide something in plain sight. And in the middle. And a place where people don't dare to look. In a dangerous and hostile environment, too. I would like to take the time to survey that area. Hmm. Oh, this is Zero talking. Well, good, good plan. Very good plan. The only stipulation that comes with that is because of Cynthia Francesca's nice, you know, stance and allegiance and where we reside and all that technical shit. We can, we can take you there. But once you're inside, gotcha. you guys are gonna be on your own. As because it is 
unclaimed neutral ground. Uh, if any one of us are spotted there, it's going to cause more problems than necessary. Though, that isn't to say we can't communicate with you, we just can't physically be in there. Oh, it's no problem at all. I'm Granted, I, I don't, but I'm more worried about Henry. He may not be able to accompany us since he's known to be employed by Francesca. The thing is, I put in a special order with Cuban for that situation. <clears throat> hmm. The detect spell. So I know when somebody's going to be coming in any traps. So that's why he was knocking at my door earlier, asking to be some of my tech. Interesting. Anyways, I ha I have a feeling that we're gonna find something that they're trying to hide. We could use that against them. We gotta be prepared before we go there, though. That and it is an entire day's worth of travel there. Plus, we have that trial we can't skip out on. There's also the trial. If, if the trial goes south, I think we should head to the center. But I need a hip Cuban shot before that. Well. Or else I'm fucked. <laughs> it won't be worth going over there right now since it's closed up for the day. That's fine. We're gonna have to... We're gonna have to have a round table complete discussion before. about all this before we set things into motion. I think we should do it before even the trial. Right, because the... In including today, we got four days until that shit happens. It's going to take an entire day to get there if you don't fly at maximum flight speed with your falcon anklets. Though, you have to account for the exhaustion and all that, but... We're going to take an entire day's worth of time to get there, flying normally. You're going, need, you're going to need time to explore the place and figure out what you can figure out. Recon. Make it back. Uh, go over all of that information. And then, assuming all of that takes a day, then the trial will be there. By that time, we wouldn't have gone. Th we wouldn't have gone through everything. That, and I don't think Diablo's in a very helping mood, as he, as Henry looks at the table and Garland and think, yeah, folks. Like, I think we got him a little pissed off with the teleportation. He needs a couple days. Well, if anything, Diablo's will try to keep you alive at all costs. Yeah, but so I'm I can't not too ask concerned too much. about that. I think doing? we'll need him for the trial if it goes south. Zero speaks up. What, have you been overworking him or something? Uh, a little. I feel bad. That was a <clears throat> half joke, but I'll take your word for it. Henry dates the whole needing the, the demon alcohol. To Zero, if he has any ingredient ingredients that could help out. Instead of Zero responding, Cynthia speaks up and she says, "Actually, I do have some herbs that were delivered to me by one of Cuban's associates." And he smiles so big. And I'm goes not, and runs up and hugs Cynthia. I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I don't. She, she swats you with her tail. Oh, slow down there, Buster. <laughs> I didn't say I could make anything out of it. Is my alcohol mixing skills aren't the greatest? Because I don't really drink like that. Henry mm. smiles. I know the perfect person for this. 
Who? Henry whistles for a mask. Come over with his wife. You two are having that conversation. Yasha still has his arms folded. He's staring. Just hard staring at the map and the center of it. Like, he's just going through a lot of thoughts right now. Nice mark. <laughs> he has a serious look on his face for once. He brings Cynthia and Max to the, the, the bar at the side. And explains the whole thing to them. So what you're telling me is that you want m my wife and I to make a drink for who is essentially damn near close to God where we come from? Or er, yeah. a God or whatever. You're the only ones I can trust. And you guys are my best demon friends. Plus, I'm pretty sure you guys are happy together. Having each other again. He... You guys haven't been separated since you got together again. He... He looks... He looks up above because, again, still, uh, his wife is literally standing on his shoulders. <laughs> he looks up, he smiles, she smiles back. And he says, yeah, well, to be fair, we do owe you a hell of a lot. And you and him also helped us get rid of that damn curse. So, I can't make any promises. But, I will give it a shot. As these herbs in front of me, I've made this drink before. But I've never used human ingredients for it. Henry has a smart idea. He pulls out the Kalberg. He's like, can this help curse them? Uh... think a cursed sword would do to a beverage yeah, it makes it, it extra a little spicy makes it extra spicy <laughs> a little demonic use the sword as a mixer for the hmm. I really don't want to give you this one but for the first time in a while this is actually a plausible idea to me though i'm not sure if you've gotten that thing under control so i'm not fucking touching it it's fine i got it under control now i need you to define under control because that probably no, means be lightning eight different anymore. things coming from you uh. And he has the little pixie in his other hand. He's like, see, I can keep her under control and starts waving her around. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So I'm going to get to work. You can leave that on the table, I guess, because there's some other things I need to do first. Joshua is still completely lost in his thoughts right now, just glaring daggers at the map. So Henry walks over to this table, puts Igni down, and starts to have a conversation with her. Zero's going to speak up and says, you know, if it wasn't a holograph, uh, if you stare at it any longer, you'd burn a hole through it. Though... As Zeril says that to Henry, Henry's like, I need your help, Zeril. I need to get her some clothes. Same material as mine. 
Can you help out? Do I look like I make clothing for small pixies? Hey, we can't have this young lady walking around naked. Right, to cover Cynthia. herself with fire. Henry screams out to Cynthia, we can't have her like that, right? Don't get me involved with this. <laughs> or you could cover yourself with fire. Freaking elementals. Osiris speaks up. You do realize elementals don't need clothing, correct? No, he doesn't know that. Harry's just shocked. You the mean mouth open? You mean to explain to me that that is that man's first time taming an elemental? Yes, he's not necessarily from here. <sighs> By the holy beast that I am, why am I still alive? Originally, I was going to destroy you, but I've decided against it. You should have destroyed me. Nah. Since you're not exactly evil, so I couldn't. <laughs> Regardless, that elemental, or I suppose most elementals, do not require human physical clothing because with the exception of its wielder and the wielder's companions most people can't even see it let alone perceive it as a human like form as to most other individuals, it just looks like a speck of fire following you around. Wait, you guys haven't been able to see it? Zero speaks up. No. All I know is that you got a ball of fire following you around. <laughs> Wait, can I see it? Uh, yeah, you can. Well, to me, she looks like a burning pixie. Anyways, that's not important right now. Zero, do you have a one-to-one -one layout of this central area? I'd have to go through my files, but I'm, I might have something somewhere. Gonna save us a lot of time if you do. I'll look for that when we close up for the night. As... <clears throat> and as, as this conversation has been, you know, taking place, a few hours have gone by, and the DJ at the entrance to the dance floor switches up the tracks and let everyone know that they can take a break, got bites to eat. He's going to be switching out his sets. And this is everyone's opportunity. To, <laughs> everyone's opportunity that's been dancing, Francesca included, to mellow out for a bit. Right. So Henry comes back over to Massman to see how the drinks are coming along. Well, I was almost done, then the person that runs the music uh, decided it was break time and then people started getting in my way. And they almost knocked the drink over. Yikes. So I'm not done yet. I'm just gonna... <laughs> That's happening. I just tell I just tell everyone I'm gonna get some air. I just leave the the area. Okay. 
As you do so, Francesca takes notice of this and follows behind you. She doesn't call out to you or anything, though. As far as you know, you don't even know that she's coming out with you. Like, when you say, are you, like, going outside, outside? Yeah, outside, outside. Just, you know, wander off. Alright, we're gonna put you guys on this map. I'm gonna remove this. This map is so cool. So much neon lights. Yourself right no, wait right here. You're you. I'm you. Oh <laughs> Delete. I win. Right here? Right here. Oh ah, okay. Okay. And when you step outside of the club, you see you see people walking around and all stuff, and it looks like things have pretty much gone back to a semblance of normalcy, as people don't necessarily look terrified anymore, and you see some street vendors that are open, you see people walking in groups now more than ever, and you can hear light uh, chit-chat in the area. I just say this to myself. Well, that's a relief. And as you say that, Jessica appears right next to you and says, Yeah, well, if there's anything about the people here, they are resilient. And they very much love their peace. Yes, they do. Slightly startled at her just appearing out of nowhere. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I spook you? Sorry, I let my guard down. Just needed to get some air. I see. I take it the conversation you were having got to be a bit much, or you just need some extra space to think. And as she says this, she's taking a towel and getting most of the sweat off of her. No, it's not that, just... I don't know. Like, for once you see, I'm at a loss for words. Hmm. How about... Well, first of all, let's take a seat. Let's take a seat right here. So let's say okay. that, why don't you do your best to verbally process your thoughts about the situation, and let's see where we go from there. I chuckle. No, it's not that I'm... <sighs> I'm just somewhat inexperienced in terms of these politics. Usually, I'm always following orders. Go over there. Destroy this enemy. Ex Asset denial. Search and destroy. Not politics. I let, I let the big wigs take care of that. So, Henry's just listening to this from the doorway. With that in mind... So, as you put it, I completely understand where you're coming from. Because I... Well... 
not necessarily in the same position of you. I've always been involved with uh, the stress-inducing world of politics, given <coughs> who my mother is. So, I've had my time of taking orders and following orders and not really having a real opinion of my own, but when I was given the position that I have now, due to the previous leader of the financial district passing away from old age, naturally, of course, it was then where I had the opportunity to make my own choices, run the show, things like that. So having all of this newfound freedom can be a bit much to learn how to deal with, but it gets easier with time, as per well, everything, to be fair. Well, I bet it does. Man. Yasha is like trying to look up at the sky to take a good look at the stars, but he can't because there's too much light pollution from all the signs. Francesca takes note of this. And without saying anything, she snaps her fingers and you feel a sudden jolt. And before you even realize that you've moved, you are now sitting on the rooftop of the club. Oh. Henry smiles because he remembers the first time he was here and had conflicting thoughts. I figured this would help you out. Much obliged. Though, <laughs> gave me quite the scare. Yeah, I don't... Oh. Well, as I'm sure you've noticed, I have a decent level of dominion over the power of lightning, and I don't really have the opportunity to just toy around with that often. Yeah, uh, recently I've just started to uh, enter that dominion as Yashua's hand starts sparking. Oh, so when did you adopt the ability to use other forms of magic? Well, as, as far as I know, whenever I see something simple, I'm just able to learn it on the spot. You see his hand arc with electricity, and you see his fingertips just light up like, uh, you know, lighters. And then you see like an ice cube in the palm of his hand, just playing around with it. I remember when I had um, I don't know how to okay no disrespect but I remember when I first had baby's first lightning powers <laughs> none taken of course to you this is gonna look like child's play since where I come from there's no such thing as magic to me this is Entirely new. Right, I this do remember you. Phenomenon you call magic. 
I'm I'm more surprised that you don't have magic. I figured that was a well before I became aware of multiple dimensions, I figured since everyone here could do it, it's the general thing. Man, I wish. Or maybe not. I'm not sure. Maybe things would be different if magic existed where we come from. Perhaps we would be more... I don't know. We'll be less advanced and rely on more magic or be more advanced and combine our technology with magic. I really don't have the answer to that. Hmm. Since magic is almost... The complete opposite of photons, I guess. At least that's how it looks like to me. These photons you mention a lot. Would you care to explain them to me as best as you can? Because ever since you've mentioned them, Zeril has acquired a newfound obsession. Well, photons are, simply put, they're like light particles. There's also multitudes of variation of them. A photons, B photons, N photons, high photons, what have you. There is a multitude of them. Photons carries an energy... A type of energy that are like building blocks. There are also some are radioactive, some are not. They also carry a frequency different from one another. Combining them together, you're able to create elements. See if I use if I vibrate photons violently enough, you could cast a flame. If you condense them hard enough, you could turn them into an ice cube. Similar to magic, just a lot more scientific. Very and interesting. It's not something you just find in one world. It's all over the universe. Planets are made from it. Stars are made from it. Even life. It's the reason why we are able to, you know, harvest, uh, repair dying worlds, even extinguish dangerous stars that are going to endanger other worlds, or even ignite a new star. Granted, it takes a lot of time to do, but it is within our capable hands and pos in realm of possibilities. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, now I understand where his newfound obsession is because that sounds like something he would Probably kill someone to work with. Yeah. You'll be surprised Henry has more knowledge on this topic. Since he was a full-ton engineer before coming here. Granted, he's n he's not the smartest in terms of uh, some situations. But when he's in a lab, he does work his magic. Yeah, I did let him use a lab once. And I don't necessarily remember exactly what he did, but he he fixed my formula for panacea I was working on. Oh well. So, 
Does your mind feel clearer? Even if by a bit? A little, yeah. I just have my concerns. Granted, I don't really care what happens to me. I'm just concerned for the everyone else. Hmm. Right. Well, one of my go-to sayings, when I'm very certain that there's going to be a positive outcome, whatever happens, happens. I very strongly believe that the trial is going to end positively. And I wouldn't be saying that if I wasn't fully convinced of that. Yeah, I have faith in your abilities and everyone else's. It's just the elements that are playing in the background bothers me. Right. The other... The other directors aren't as... We'll say agreeable as I am. Because all those... All those meetings and such that I've had to attend and all the reports I've had to do because... Grant, they have had their own fair share of issues, but as Cynthia and Zero said, what they had to deal with was nothing even close to what went down over on this side of the city. <laughs> Forgive me, and I just don't quite understand how how is it any of those directors' business what happens here in this di district? I mean. You are the director of this district, are you not? Why does it concern them? Because... When the city was founded many, 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 many years ago... Everything was initially one giant conglomerate. But... Differing ideas and opinions cause things to fragment off from each other, and because we all did used to live here, and all of us have family and whatnot in each other's districts, it's kind of par for the course. In a strange way. Though, granted, even though we all butt heads and have wildly different opinions and directions and stuff we want to go, everything has to work in some kind of cycle of unity. So, as much as it pains me to say it, we all kind of need each other. Like, there are shipments from the mostly cybernetic side of the city that we get and we need. There's stuff that we have that the other districts need and vice versa. I see, I understand. Yeah, it's just that in over the course of time the directors of the other two districts decided to not work with the people but borderline against the people as I'm sure it was explained to you that here I work for them and make sure that everything is as peaceful and flow smoothly as possible people have as much freedom as they can within reason and the other districts they 
the people don't have very much freedom. But, at the end of the day, personal reasons and bias aside, they are running their districts well. Well, enough not to cause a civil war, it seems. That, and if the other districts were to try and start war with us, with the with everyone, with the exception of my mother, I could single-handedly take them all on. Yeah, I don't doubt it. When it comes to my mother, I might have to call Angie and the rest for some help. But that's <sighs> the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. I just look down from the ceiling, just look at people walking, chatting with one another. So, what should we do tomorrow then? <sighs> well, given the current situation, I think that tomorrow you all should probably make preparations to get to the center and discover what you can because that's going to most likely be an all-day operation. Oh, I don't doubt it. Just, I don't know if we'll be able to make it in time for the trial, or someone's gonna have to kill time for us until we get back. Well, starting from tomorrow, you have three days until then. The operation, well, investigating the central area is going to take a day. And if you decide to use your new flight gear to get back to the city flying at the highest possible speed you'll you'll make it back within oh four hours which then will leave two days being to review and go over all of the information that you have acquired and assuming that will be an all-day process then you will have one day's worth of free time to do whatever it is you wish because the following day after that will be the trial all right sounds like a plan And I'm sure Zero will explain to you that none of us can accompany you into the central zone, yes? Yeah, he told me that, but it's no problem. I, I'm used to working alone in operations. It's nice that I'll be having Dreva and, well, I don't know if Henry could accompany us since he works under you. There's some modifications I can make to Henry's status here that will grant him entry. Yeah, you could just fire him temporarily. Well, just, I wish it was as easy as f firing him. I would just have to make some changes to his citizenship. Ah. <sighs>
At this point, you see me just sitting at the edge of the roof, like the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that this is a bit much, but Angie sent you guys here for a reason, because she... Without a shadow of a doubt, believe you all could help us out, and by helping us out, you'd be helping yourselves and getting closer and closer to getting back home. Home, yeah. I don't think home will be the same after all this is over. Well, that's quite ominous. Just, I'm saying that because I've got into a touch with this world, even though the little time we've spent here. I've been to many different worlds before, but this one, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what this world is, but I feel at peace here. Well... It's very good to know that you feel at peace here in Palamecia. Very good to know. I say that. You see Yasha gripping, like, the edge of the roof, right? Mm hmm And, like, he grips it in a way where it starts cracking a little bit. The strength roll quickly. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Henry <laughs> Henry dodges a piece of concrete falling from the roof. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> okay, so he grips the like the piece of the roof he's sitting on, and then he says he makes a small promise to himself, like he says this to himself, but I don't know if Francesca will be able to hear it. You might have to roll for her. Well, given that well, yeah, you he makes, pretty much I'm sitting pretty sure right she, next she, to each other. He's sharp enough to hear you. <laughs> yeah, uh, he mumbles to himself that he won't let anything happen to this town and the rest of this world since he couldn't stop the catastrophe of his she doesn't say anything but she smiles to herself after hearing that then he panics a little bit because he damaged the roof uh, uh. don't worry about it He just scratches the back of his head, like, he just nods to apologize. <laughs> Anyways, we should, uh, head back inside. Alrighty. She... snaps her fingers again. And you all stand before the <clears throat> the door to the club. I stop her from going in just to tell her that, you know, thanks for the pep talk. Of course. It's, uh, it's something I have to be good at, given my job, huh? <laughs> I just smile at her. What are you doing here, Henry? Henry is just grinning and terrified with the concrete on the floor. <laughs> <sighs> you should be more careful when you eavesdrop. You may lose a head. I walk by him. Henry's just like grasping onto Igni. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
move you back inside. And when you re-enter the club, uh, you see that uh, break time has ceased and people are back to dancing again. <laughs> Henry runs over to Mask Man. Are they done? Are they done? Hang on, I'm looking for something. Is it this? Uh oh. Um, I know this song. You walk over to Max and he says, The drink is finished. And I took a sip for myself in a shot glass and. Well, to be honest, I forgot how goddamn good this was. So. Harry, Harry's bit mild and grabs the door to put the back <laughs> into the sheath. Like, okay, we don't need any casualties from this. Alright. So, I'm assuming you're gonna give this to Diablos now, right? Yeah, so, like... Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Because we don't know how his reaction's gonna be with me voluntary. <laughs> Well, you have fun doing that. I'm gonna go take a seat. Henry takes the two drinks and makes his way over. Actually, he takes three drinks and walks over to Raphael first. I'm just gonna sit over here and just put my head against the table. All right. Henry hands one of the drinks to Raphael and makes his way over to Diablo. Right. And Garland and says, Here's your reward, Diablo. He takes a drink, he He sides eye he, he gives you a side eye with an extra level of attitude. And he's just gonna say What's up, I guess. Whoa! Whoa. Henry steps back. <laughs> Wow! How? When? Where? What'd you do? Henry snorks and says, "That's your reward." It must taste like home, doesn't it? Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty gross. I'll give you that. Henry smirks and walks off with agony. <laughs> Going back to Maskman, thanking him and his wife so much. You know, darling. That. That guy. He's, uh. By all accounts, he's pretty fucking insane. And I. Things are not going for me, but I can't deny that through his insanity, he's a pretty hard guy. And in response, God is going to say, oh, <laughs> now how many years has it been since I've heard you give words of praise to someone like that? And Diablos waves him off as he finishes his drink. <laughs> and for that, Henry, I will give you a friendship rank increase with Diablos. Yeah. Hey! I will give you the benefits of those once session is over. I get a little cup for Agony too, and give her a little cup of it. Don't snuff off the fire. Roll... Constitution for her. Constitution. <laughs> okay. Uh... She reluctantly takes the drink. She takes a sip. 
she has no adverse reaction to it and enjoys it as far as you can tell Henry just pats her head and grabs the normal drink and brings it to Dreva and you can see Dreva doing some maintenance on her staff organizing her inventory and she takes note of you and she says oh uh thanks i was getting a, a, a bit thirsty henry smiles and says well we're friends after all and he walks off to see what yashua is doing As my you... head is just down i'm putting my head down against the table as you walk away from Draco, uh, you don't see it, but she's circling the drink in the cup, and she's reflecting on uh, the friend's comment as she takes a swig with a smile. Henry's breaking everybody's shell <laughs> slowly. <laughs> That's that's how insane he is. <laughs> Henry puts agony down on the table and looks at Yashua and gives him a uh, bottle of whiskey and two cop shots on the table, like old times. Ah, uh, like old times, I suppose. Raise my head. So, does this little, uh, elemental have a name? It's Igni. Igni. Did you choose that name for her, or did she choose it herself? Eh, I think she chose it herself. As we both look at her, giggling while drinking. And then when she notices us, she does the little Grumpy Sindri. Like, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> A little firecracker. Cute little thing, I will say. As you two uh, enjoy your drinks and have a good old time moment again, Osiris approaches Drava. And she doesn't necessarily say anything to her, but she looks at her, she pulls her into the other room, closes the door, and with that, session is going to end for today. I'll give you 15 seconds to get out your fake sponsorships because we are not sponsored yet. Yeah, you're sponsored by me. I will do it myself. <laughs> give me your PayPal. Ayo. Hey, hey, <laughs> Buy a Ridge Wallet. Buy a Ridge Wallet. <laughs> Buy a Ridge Wallet. <laughs> All right. I love those things. Alright, I have hit the I threw one at my little brother the other day. <laughs> <laughs>